Hello and welcome to our discussion of the cash receipts budget. This is a, an important part of the overall cash budget. We're going to talk about cash receipts in this section, cash disbursements in the next, and then the overall cash budget. So again, we have those three budgets overall. Cash receipts generally comes first in the cash budget section, although there's really no requirement that it come prior to the cash disbursements. The two can go at either time, but obviously they have to go before the overall cash budget. Now this is just an overview of the budget, the same illustration we've looked at for several discussions now. So we're down at the cash budget, which is in the last layer. But notice there are a lot of things that relate to the cash budget. Sales relates to the cash budget because at some point we collect those sales. Direct materials relates to the cash budget because obviously we have to pay for the materials. Same thing applies to direct labor, manufacturing overhead, and selling in general administrative costs. Basically we have to pay for all of those at some point. We receive the money from the sales and we have to pay for the expenses. So that's what's going on here. Now notice there's also a link between the cash budget and the budgeted balance sheet because again the cash budget or cash balance is an asset on the balance sheet. Now uh, this is not necessarily a cash flow statement, not in the same format as you normally see a cash flow statement in, but it's still very important. It still shows why the cash has changed, where did we get it from, where did we spend it. It just doesn't break it into the operating, financing, investing sections. It just breaks it into different categories instead of that. Now, to complete the cash receipts budget, our main thing is sales. We need to know the sales budget numbers because that's what we're eventually going to collect. But it's not that simple in most cases. It's not just taking the numbers from the sales budget and we're good to go, we're done. Instead, we have to take a look at our collection patterns. So assuming we're not a cash only company, because if we were a cash only company, that it would indeed be as simple as whatever the sales figures were is also our cash collections. But in most cases, they have credit. They allow for payments over time accounts receivable. So we need to figure out what those collection patterns are, how much is collected in the in the current month. So well first of all how much is related to immediate cash sales. So in some cases you're not going to have all payments on account. Some of them may be cash immediately. So those are obviously collected that first month. But then out of the credit sales that you have, you may have some collected in the current month even though they were credit. They may be a few weeks later, but they're still in the current month. Then you need to know how many credit sales are collected one month later. Now usually these will be given to you in percentages because it's a it's a pattern, it's a history. What did we collect per, uh, the last year? What was our pattern? We're going to apply that this year perhaps. Now in some cases if you allow 60 days or more for your credit sales for your accounts receivable, then you may actually have some percentage of those credit sales collected two months later. But that's most of the textbook problems don't go that far. But the final thing here is since we're dealing with credit, we know that there's a chance that we may not receive all of it at all. There may be a 5% bad debt expense. So anything, any predicted amount that we're not going to ever receive, we have to con consider that as well because it's not going to ever be in the cash receipts. It came from sales, but it's never going to make it to cash receipts. Now, because of the fact that we're dealing with receipts from sales in a prior period, we're going to have a beginning accounts receivable for the current month. Basically, that's the amount from either last month or two months ago that we're now planning to collect sometime this period. So we need to know the beginning accounts receivable, which is last year's ending accounts receivable. That's our starting point because we're going to collect it usually in that first month. But we also have to consider what is our ending accounts receivable balance because that's going to go on the balance sheet. That's going to carry over to the next period so we can collect it in the next period. Now that's why the balance sheet comes into play. I mentioned it shows our cash balance, which certainly is important, but it also shows the ending accounts receivable balance as well. 
So if you look at what we have here, we're going to see, and there's information that you would usually be given prior to this in, out of the textbook. It basically is going to tell us here that we have 30% of our sales in any given month are cash sales. The other 70% are credit sales. And then we're going to see a 60-40 split out of that 70%. So in other words, 60% of the 70% of credit sales are going to be collected in the current month in question. The other 40% are going to be collected in the following month. So 30% are cash, the other 70% are credit, and out of that 70%, 60% are collected in the current month, 40% are collected in the next month. Now notice, you can't add 60 and 40 to get 70. I'm saying out of this 70%, it's a new number, and that new number is has a 60-40 split. So keep that in mind. Now, we don't have March's data necessarily with us, but since it's just a one-month, it's just a two-month collection period, the current month and the next month, we can assume that any beginning AR balance of April, which is March's ending balance, we can assume that we're collecting it in April. And in this case, we haven't even talked about bad debts, so apparently we have no bad debts, which is a little unusual, but we're going to go with that assumption. So... March is, if we had March, their ending AR would have been $405,225, and that would have reflected March's sales, 70% of them multiplied by 40%, that were going to be collected in April. So here it is. We're going to collect this in April. And now we have uh, April's cash sales, which, again, we go back to the cash budget, multiply it by 30%, and we'd get $130,050. Now, the other part, we would take the amount of April credit sales that we're collecting in that month, so that's 70% of the actual sales dollars for April, multiplied by 60% for collecting in that month, and we'd get $182,070. Now, notice we still have some April credit sales, but these are going to be collected in May. That's the other 40%. So now let's go to May. And notice this. there's a slight difference in the format here because, yes, we still have the beginning AR balance, but notice it's the same. Well, first of all, it's the same as April's ending balance, but it's this number right here. It's April's credit sales multiplied by 70, or April's credit sales, which was 70% of sales, multiplied by the 40% we're collecting in the next period. So that's where the 121,380 comes from. This is what we're collecting it's the same as this. Don't duplicate these. Don't add both of them together. Then we have May's cash sales, 30% of May's sales. And then we have seven, uh, out of May's sales, multiplied by 70%, multiplied by 60. That's what we're collecting in May. And you can see, go forward, uh, that adds up to $782,340 collected in May. Notice... We had two hundred seventy or $257,040, which is the other 40% of May's credit sales that we are, have not yet collected. They're in ending AR, which also carries forward to beginning AR for June. And here we also have it in this column for May's credit sales that we collected in June. So again, don't duplicate the numbers here. You might see slightly different formats. Sometimes they won't give you a beginning AR balance number. The only reason I'm doing that is because we're tying it to the balance sheet later on. You might just have a separate column, prior month's sales collected in April in this case. But now we have June. It's 40% of the 70% of May's credit sales, or May's sales in general. We also have June's cash sales, which are 30% of June sales. And we have the 70% of June sales multiplied by the 60% collected that month, that's 449820 The other 40% of June's credit sales are going to be left in ending AR, just like before. You know, your quarterly, this is the other thing I want to mention. For some of these budgets that have inventories, the quarterly budget for beginning is going to be the very beginning of the quarter. The quarterly budget amount for ending is going to be the very last quarter's ending amount. So keep that in mind. It's not a total. I've mentioned that in other sections as well. Now we have a total cash receipts of adding all three of these months up. 
two and a half million dollars. Now that takes us to the end of the cash receipts budget. Hopefully that has helped to clarify this particular budget. We're going to move on to the cash disbursements budget in just a bit. But I thank you for your time today.